Big thank you to Michael. He sent this, and it's the basically the A pillar plastic cover. Of course, it's in blue, but this is so hard to get. And he was nice enough to get this and send it. Well, I'm going to go ahead and clean it and then dye it black. Really good at removing any kind of wax and grease or arm roll, whatever you had in there. Now, I would use warm soapy water and a scrubby brush like this or even scotch Bright, but you want to get all of the dirt and grease and grime off that. So make sure it's 100% dry. Also, by warming it up a little bit really helps. The looseness in the wheel I'm talking about. You hear that? Well, it's kind of prominent when you put it into reverse and back up just lightly. Listen. Right there. So that is the noise we're experiencing. And that's what makes the car just feel loose. Even though it's not a huge amount of play, it's just noise and it's related to the steering. It just makes the car feel rickety. We found this right here. If you watch this, there's a little bit of movement right there. So there is a bushing on the end of the rack, uh, this end of the rack. And it's still available from Honda, believe it or not. So we're going to uh, wait while that part comes in. I just ordered it. I'll show you the part number later. I'll show you the part number when it comes in, but it's behind here. You hear that? Kind of a rattle. That's where it's coming from. We've identified it for that bushing and it's a pretty uh, inexpensive. I think it's about 15 bucks. It's the same kind of material as Honda used in their shift bushings on the S2000 and it snaps in the rack. Well, I don't know how easy this is going to be to get out. It's got these little tabs right here. Well, you can see those on the outside of the rack. So I'm wondering if we can just kind of squeeze this in and push it out. The rack is here and the inner tie rod is through this part. So I'm not sure if it's going to squish down over the tie rod or not, or the inner tie rod. But that's the bushing. That is the part number right there. I'll let you know for sure if it fixes the problem. So that stuff comes out so good. If you kind of follow my advice, clean it really good. Uh, three or four light coats, it comes out spectacular. I mean, that is passable for a brand new piece now. Well, it's pretty easy to replace. It's all snap clips. This is the funny thing. I usually dye the backside, but it was so clean after I finished it. I didn't want to mess with it. All the clips are completely intact. So this is basically just a snap in, snap out part. I don't like to use those pry tools unless I have to. I like to use my fingers because I can feel the plastic. I can feel if it's bending. You're going to pull this weather stripping down here. This will come down pretty easily. It actually slots in there. You should just pull that back. I used to do a ton of this on the CRXs back in the day and just wobble it out there. And again, this stuff is old and fragile, so be easy with it. So it's really tight there. Now the headliner is really brittle, so it sounds crazy and I'm telling you this, I might sound like a broken record. Don't put any force on this stuff. This stuff is like, it's like China. It breaks, it's so brittle. You put any kind of pressure on it, it's gonna break and crack. And you're not gonna get this. You're not gonna get a headliner, that's for sure. So carefully put your fingers in there, pry down nice and careful. Little out of time, I guess. And the good thing is we're not using this one, so it doesn't matter if I break it, but you still feel bad breaking one of these parts. So there it is, that part there. This should just pull out of here. There we go. Looks exactly the same, looks perfect just doesn't have holes in it. So same way, snap it in. We're gonna put this end in first and then just make sure that these line up with the holes on the car. Don't force it. Just take your time. If in doubt, take it off, look it over. Don't force it, don't hammer on it. So same way, put this down towards the windshield first. Uh, be careful not to scratch your interior while you're working on it. Again, it's kind of self-explanatory, but some people are just rough. I had this one friend, we used to joke about it. It was just rough. It would manhandle everything and force it in. and 
even with his RC airplanes. <laughs> I don't know if he watches. But even with his RC airplanes, I used to be like, hey, gentle, careful. These things are made of balsa wood. Be careful. He'd be working out like a piece of transmission. It was just so funny, but it used to drive me nuts because I was, I was extra cautious. So, gotta line these clips up before you start pushing. That lines up there, and it should go in. It would really suck if I broke this piece because this is the new piece. Um, still gotta go down further. There it goes. Oh, look at that. So, so I said before you go pushing it in, just kind of look it over, make sure the clips line up. You can always do it twice. If you break it, it's like the dash when I talked about it. When you put it together, if you leave a scratch on it because you rushed it, that scratch is always there to remind you that you rushed it and you made a mistake. And if you're like me, it's going to drive you nuts. You're going to end up having to fix it. So take your time. Do it slowly as opposed to rushing it and doing it twice. So there we go. That lines up. That should just push in there. That lines up. Didn't bring a flashlight. You know what? Modern technology. No flashlight in my pocket. So if you guys are still listening to this and not tuned out, um, if you know Steve, if you've watched all this series and you know ID, I keep talking about this person, Steve. Steve was a really good friend of mine, a friend since 1996. And how I met Steve is I was upgrading my CRX. I took a header off and I was building a package. I put the header in the newspaper DC Sports header, CRX SI, 88 to 91, two months old. And this guy out of nowhere called Bert answers the ad. Well, long story, you, you heard about the Bert hatch. You might even know who Bert is. Um, Bert introduces me to Steve. And he says, you're gonna like this guy. This guy is super OCD. And he has a white CRX SI. You'll, you guys will get along, you gotta meet him. So I think he told Steve the same thing. Hey, you gotta meet this guy called John. He has a CRX, he has a shop in, in uh, St. Pete or wherever he used to say that I was from. And you guys are gonna hang out. You guys will probably get along. So I meet this Steve and Steve is all about OEM. He don't wanna modify anything. And everything I touch, I modify. As my dad used to tell me, everything I owned, I took to bits in the first five minutes. That's an English term. When you take stuff to bits, you take it apart. Well, that was very true. Everything I touched, I had to modify it. Either I had to know how it worked or I had to make it better or faster. I wanna put my phone on silent because if not, someone is gonna keep messaging me constantly. These things are great and tall. They just won't leave you alone. Now I've got uh, Duke Energy telling me what the power bill is prospected, prospected, prospected to be projected, should I say. Um, it's just amazing. All right, that clips in there, that folds there. So I get to meet Steve and he had this car at the time, um, bone stock, SI. Look at that. As the young people would say, a satisfying click. I meet him, he comes down. I have a B16 CRX SI at the time. I just swapped, super clean. Uh, LSD transmission, uh, OEM, JDM airbox, like the one I have in here, just looked perfect. Steve looks at it and he's impressed with the job. I didn't realize how uh, picky Steve was, but Steve really liked how it looked. And I said, hey, if you're interested in taking for a drive, you know, meanwhile, I'm trying to sell Steve. There we go. Trying to sell Steve a job. So he goes, takes it for a drive. And he goes, ah, it's okay. I go, what do you think once you got it up in the RPM? He goes, well, I didn't run it hard. I only took it to like 5,000 RPMs. Well, a B16, they have no power on the bottom. They don't get going until 6,000. And he said, honestly, my car drives better. It's got more power, which was the D16A6. Well, long story, many years, we built cars together. He did all the wiring on all of the complicated jobs. Uh, wiring on the first KRZ, Steve figured it out. 
the very first insight. In fact, all 13 K sites that we built, we built 13 of them in all. Uh, he did the wiring on all of them. Uh, just in case you guys have emailed me and asked me about doing a K site, we're not doing any more. And it's just maybe things will change, but it's the he wired every single one and he was a part of every single one. It was kind of like our baby. We dreamt of that project together. It was mainly my dream, but he was a big part of it. And I just decided if he can't be a part of it, we're not going to build anymore. Which, uh, you know, it's not just about the money. It's just okay. I've recorded this four times now, and I either talk for too long or I can't get my thoughts out and I end up losing it. So let me cut right to the chase. Answer some of the comments in the videos. The YCRX is not for sale. I inherited it from Steve. He passed in September last year, and I inherited that car. And we basically built the car the way Steve and I talked about. We talked in the past about putting a B-Series motor in it, so I kind of kept that theme the way Steve and I would have done it together. Uh, it was never intended to be a, a race car or put a turbo on it or anything, because that was not in Steve's his thought process when he would build a car. He was very conservative. Well, the Cozy K1 wheels came from, they were the wheels I had on my CRX. They were called Buddy Club at the time. They were the first version. I had those on my CRX. So I kind of kept that late 90s theme. That's the, the thought process behind this car. So if it answers some of the questions, why didn't you do this wheel? Why didn't you put this on it? Why did you, you know, why didn't you repaint it? Why didn't you put Recaro seats in it? Because we're trying to recreate what we had planned. And I'm basically building it like Steve was here. Like I, so many times, George, George knows Steve very well too, but so many times, I'd want to take a picture of it and text it to Steve. Hey, what do you think of this? Because we did that all the time. And you don't realize when someone's gone how special they wear and how much of a part of your life they wear. So that's the answer. It's not going to be for sale. I'll be buried in that car if, or it's going to get passed down to someone in the family is the only way that car is going to leave. But the still more things to come on this. Hopefully you're getting some ideas from it. Hopefully you're getting some of my emotion over here because it's tough doing these videos with this car uh, friends are those people that are very important in your life and you don't realize uh, life is fragile I thought Steve would be here forever I used to text him we went to SEMA we went to the Nopi Nationals we spent many late nights in here we did three late nights till 2 a.m. three late nights in a row building the very first K site so we had a lot of time together Steve was a brilliant person and a great friend. And those friends you don't realize are not always gonna be here. So take some advice from a 50 year old guy that's been doing this a long time. Cherish those memories and cherish those friends. Let's go back to the C-Rex. took care of that looseness and I would feel it in reverse also just releasing the clutch going back with slowly it would also rattle it too that's smooth now it's completely completely eliminated that so it was a little dirty a little nasty 
we cleaned everything out, re-greased it, readjusted the rack. There is that adjustment screw in there. You don't want to over tighten that, but we did preload it back to the way it was. But yeah, that's much better. Awesome. So it's not too bad. Obviously, you're gonna see the rack has to come out that clip. Maybe if you used a special tool, you can get that bushing out, but we couldn't get it out, so we have to remove the rack. But that has definitely been worthwhile. That was about two hours and uh, greasy hands and greasy rags, but that has took that noise completely away. That makes all the difference.